So I wanted to review one technique, smudging. Um, I'm using the compressed charcoal from our kit and I drew a five-step value chart. And what I'm going to do is make five equal steps using the charcoal. Um, and you'll see that I blocked in all of the steps past one and I'm using the chamois cloth to uh, buff the surface, to smooth out the charcoal. And then for the next step down, um, I'm overlapping all of the values darker than step three. And then again, I'm smoothing it out with the chamois cloth. And then I come back and overlap all of the values darker than step four. And again, I'll smooth it out with the chamois cloth. And then I'll smudge in uh, darkness number five and smooth it out with the chamois cloth. So there are other ways to lay down value, such as sort of scribbling in uh, with our charcoal in blocky patches. But I find this to be a little bit sloppy and undesirable. You can see at the spots where marks, where the blocks of marks come together, uh, it looks kind of a little bit messy and it sort of creates a geometric pattern. The alternate to this is hatching, where we block in value mark by mark with uh, sort of carefully placed sensitive mark making. And you can also see that I'm staggering my marks in sort of a organic cloud pattern. And uh, that organic patterning um, allows one patch, when it overlaps the other patch, to end up being a smooth, homogeneous, uh, seamless blend. So I briefly wanted to remind you of a mark making exercise we did a long time ago um, where uh, I said kind of like an airplane lands softly and then takes off again uh, and the mark fades in gently and then fades out again gently. Um, I'm calling those sasa buki marks and Sasabuki means bamboo leaf, um, like the sides of a bamboo leaf, it kind of fades in and fades out. And these can really help you with your cross hatching. Soft, cloud-like patches overlapping with organic edges. As you build those up, it creates a smooth, homogeneous look. And that's the secret to good cross hatching. Since we're talking about cross hatching, how do we know which way to do the cross hatching? And uh, one answer is sometimes it's used for different purposes. Um, sometimes we want things to go a little bit dark, but we don't want to obscure the details. So you see here, I laid down a series of vertical marks. And with hatching, I'm going over it horizontally. 
And what that's doing is tinting everything a little bit darker, but it doesn't obscure the original details. Alternatively, if I want my hatching to sort of blend in with the surface details of my drawing, then what I want to do is a nearly parallel angle. As soon as we start to overlap um, nearly parallel angled hatching, along with the original marks that I have, it tends to integrate, create a homogeneous surface. So now I'm adding some at another nearly parallel angle. You can see how it doesn't stay separate from any of the previous mark making. It becomes one with the surface of the form. In other words, we can use hatching for transparent effect on the left or an opaque effect. So if you want smooth, homogeneous hatching that all blends together seamlessly, then you want to be very deliberate with the directions you use. The first layer might be all in one direction, then the second layer might be in a nearly parallel direction. Then the third layer might be in another nearly parallel direction. And then you can add a bit more of a angle nearly parallel to one of the previous layers. And again, more of an angle, but nearly parallel to the opposite previous layer. Let's see this in another value chart using hatching. So I'm blocking in all of the values deeper than two, all in the same direction. All of the values deeper than three at a nearly parallel uh, direction to that original hatching. All the values deeper than four in a nearly parallel direction to that previous layer. And five, again, a nearly parallel direction to one of the previous layers. So let's talk about our project this week. I don't mind if you use uh, hatching with charcoal or if you want to use hatching with pen or pencil or if you want to use the smudging technique. Either of any of these are fine. Just start by choosing whatever medium you want and you need to make a value chart and this is going to help us with our project. Then you want to choose your subject matter. The subject is up to you. I chose a still life with a potato for this exercise. The value chart is for us to scrutinize the value of the still life. So we can use it as a visual aid, holding it up to our eye in front of the still life. So I've made my value chart, and now what I'm going to do is make a value map. 
So I'm doing a very crude sketch of my still life. And what I want to do is have a pre-planned idea of where the different values are going to fall. So I'm starting with my dark points, any areas that are going to be the deepest black, I label five. And then I'm working my way backwards. The second deepest points are four. The third deepest points are threes. And uh, other areas that are lighter, but there's still um, a bit of shadow, those are twos. And I'm reserving the absolute whites for one. So then going into the still life, I know what my values are going to be in general. So then I'm ready to start sketching. And I just do a very light uh, sort of gesture drawing. I don't want to overcommit to any details, but I'm kind of figuring out the layout, the composition, and um, even a bit of uh, where the details sit for my drawing. I'm also trying to uh, check my angles and proportions um, so that when I do start to bring in value, nothing is incredibly far off. You can see I'm even getting some information to indicate the background areas and a few of the surf surface details. A lot of this will be covered by the value when we start uh, blocking in value, but we don't have to worry about that too much. It's sort of a map, a sketch. So next, I'm going to start blocking in value, um, looking at my value chart as a reference. Um, I'm going to block in all of the areas that are uh, two or darker. From there, I'm going to take a minute to use a charcoal pencil and bring out some of the important lines so that they don't get lost in the value. And charcoal pencil, if, if you're using the same materials, it tends to sort of not be erased when I come in with the chamois cloth in order to smooth out the charcoal. So after I've brought in some linear details, I'm taking my chamois cloth and again in a very soft circular motion, uh, I'm not trying to erase or rub away the charcoal, I'm just trying to smooth it out and um, I'm kind of le leaving the lines alone so that they remain crisp and sharp. So. It's a good time to remind you, um, this is very much the same process that we went over at the beginning. 
of making a value chart with smudging. So we kind of would lay in a value, all of the values darker than two, give it a good smudge. Then layer on top of that, all the values darker than three and give it a good smudge, etc. So here you can see I'm starting to smudge in all of the areas that are value three and darker. And then again, I'm going to take my chamois cloth and carefully smooth out the value. Here, all of the values that are four or darker, and I'll follow the same steps. And here, I'm going to go over all the areas that are value five, and also bring out some, some more of the surface details within the drawing.
and I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to refine some surface details and clean it up a bit using kneaded eraser. The drawing isn't complete at this stage, um, but it's getting there. We're going to talk some more next week about how to refine the image and put some finishing touches on it. So for this week, this is a good stopping point. Just a final reminder to please take the time to take a good art documentation photo of your piece for this week. Thank you. Good luck, guys.